guys, and welcome back to another Doctor Who review. Today I'm taking a look at the latest release from Who Dares Publishing, which is the second in their series of A4 art portfolios spotlighting the work of Doctor Who artists. This time it's Regeneration Art by Andrew Skilleter, showcasing his covers for the regeneration-based Doctor Who stories of the BBC video range from the early 90s. Now there are actually two variations of this set available, because the previous Key to Time set proved so popular. So this time around there is a limited edition set, limited to 200, which features the handmade portfolio, the artwork digitally printed on heavyweight quality paper, along with facsimiles of the original concept art and a collector's booklet. Then there's the Artist's Limited Edition, which is what I'm looking at today, and that features the handmade portfolio, the collector's booklet, the art printed on heavy archival paper with archival ink, each print signed by the artist and features a numbered certificate of authenticity that is also signed by the artist, and that is limited to 50 worldwide. So once again, a huge thank you to Who Dares Publishing for passing on a copy of this for me to review. I'm really excited to get stuck into this one, so let's take a look. The prints come presented in this high quality hardback portfolio with the Who Dares Publishing logo printed on the front in black and a metallic red, and that really pops out from the white background. At the bottom we have the title of the portfolio printed in a chrome finish, and then these details continue around to the spine, also featuring the number 2 to show it's the second in the series. Opening it up, you can see the prints are nicely tucked into the handmade folder. The inside features this faux leather finish, and has two tabs in either corner to fit the prints in snugly and safely. It's beautifully done, and it really feels like a high-end collector's piece. Inside we have the Certificate of Authenticity, signed by Andrew Skilleter, explaining a little bit about the set. Also included is an in-depth collector's booklet, which features a biography about the artist, a foreword from the artist, and then a small section on each of the covers, where the artist gives us some insight behind the scenes. As with the previous set, I love the way that this is presented. The information is insightful, and it gives us the opportunity to look at the artwork in the way it was originally presented, and uses the same graphical elements of the original VHS covers to inform the design of each box out segment. It just screams the soldier for fans like myself who collected the original videotapes, and then it shows that Who Dares Publishing are very mindful of their target audience. Then we have the A4 sized prints themselves, and they are stunning. Just as with the previous set, it is a real joy to see these covers presented in such a high quality fashion. The colours are so vivid, and the fine details have been expertly reproduced. This set in particular has more of a nostalgia trip for me than the previous set, because some of these videos were around with me since my early childhood, and they really evoke memories of being a young fan, watching old episodes of Doctor Who, and being captivated by the cover art of the video boxes. The one that really does it for me, and happens to be my favourite in the set, is the cover to Planet of the Spiders. This piece was commissioned in 1991, the year before I was born, and it is superb, and it was actually the first cover Andrew Skilleter did for the range. It's amazing to see the level of detail here, particularly in the cavern of the Great One. The different shades of blue are beautiful, and it really pushes the colour theme of the blue crystals from the blue planet Metabilis III. Even having some of the landscape in the background, and the crystal itself in the foreground, with a brilliant likeness of John Pertwee looming above the imposing figure of the Great One, and teeny tiny Pertwee. The cover for Logopolis features some great elements from the story, such as the Watcher, the radio telescope on the planet's surface, and the image of the universe in a state of entropy, as featured in the story itself. Alongside this we have two great likenesses of Anthony Ainley's Master, and the fourth Doctor, Tom Baker. The following cover for Cast Revolver also features Ainley's Master, but this time in a more threatening pose with Tissue Compression Eliminator in hand. This is another cover that I really loved growing up, and if I remember rightly, I think we bought this video at Long Leap back when they had their own Doctor Who exhibition. And we have a great likeness of Davison in the middle, and then this brilliant homage to MC Escher behind him, featuring the smaller Davisons caught in the recursive reclusion. But this cover also features the Master's TARDIS in pillar form, and I absolutely love the fact that the electricity effect has been replicated to look just like the effect used in the episode. The use of the soft pinks in the background gives us a sense of the pink hue from the Zero Room, which is a really nice touch. The Caves of Androzani cover is much darker than the previous covers, and it's fitting because of the dark themes of the story. 
We have the neighbouring planets of Andrazani Minor and Major, with Shara's Jek's maniacal face looming over the flames of a war-torn world, alongside his armed android and that memorable image of the burnt-out android later in the story. The image of Davison is taken straight out of episode 3 when he's trying to pilot the shuttle, and I love the fact that Skeletor was able to use this reference image because it really captures the desperation of the fifth Doctor from that story. Now this was a video I got much later down the line. In fact, I actually had the story on DVD before my brother went back and bought it on VHS so we could complete the collection. But this and the cover for Legopolis have some nostalgia for me because I can remember seeing the images of these covers printed on the inside of the video covers themselves, and I used to love looking at the advertisements for the other videos that we didn't have, or in some cases episodes that I hadn't yet seen, and this was a cover that I remember seeing advertised quite a lot. Then onto the Twin Dilemma, this isn't a story that really gets a great deal of praise, but it did get a very nice VHS cover. There's a great likeness of Colin Baker in a very muted variation of his costume. Then we have the Jacondon, which is a great addition because you can really see the fine details of the feathers on the actor's makeup. Mestor is presented in an ephemeral green glow, reminiscent of his powers seen in the story. And then we have a great dramatic element in the middle, which is the base exploding. Finally, we have the cover to the Tenth Planet, which was a cover that was never actually published. So this was from 1993, and it was commissioned because at the time, the BBC thought they'd gotten their hands on a copy of the missing episode four from this story. So a VHS release was quickly planned with Michael Craze, that's Ben Jackson, recording some inserts for the video, and you can actually still see these on YouTube. And of course, a cover was commissioned for the prospective release. Unfortunately, the whole thing turned out to be a massive hoax, and the VHS release was shelved until it came out in a collector's tin alongside Attack of the Cybermen, by which point the hand-painted covers were replaced by the hugely inferior digital art covers. Honestly, it was the worst thing they could have ever done, and I've no idea why they did it. Maybe they thought it was too expensive having hand-painted art, or maybe they just thought it looked outdated. Either way, it is fantastic that we actually get to see the cover that was never released, and I absolutely love it. It's quite stark in its monochromatic styling, but that's evocative of the episode itself because it captures a sense of that barren arctic wasteland. We have a fantastic likeness of Hartnell and a suitably creepy Cyberman at the top. And just like the artist, I too have a fondness for those original cloth-faced Cybermen. We also get some additional story elements like Mondas exploding alongside the Earth and several cyber ships fleeing their dying world. It really is a pity that we didn't get to add this to our collections on the video shelf, but it is great to finally have it presented in such high quality. The set also comes with reproductions of Skeletor's original concept designs in blue pencil, and it just gives us a bit of insight into the artist's ideas for the covers, featuring handwritten notes along the side, highlighting particular details and also little notes to make sure he got the concept art sent back to him. It's interesting to see the more simplified design alongside the fully painted, detailed versions and to see where things differed from concept to release, like Tom Baker's expression on the cover of Legopolis, something that the BBC asked to be changed. So overall, this is a really fantastic set. It's the same incredibly high quality as the previous Key to Time set, and with the additional material to look over as well. If you're a classic Doctor Who fan, then I highly recommend either edition. But if you're a fan who grew up with those original videotapes, like I did, well, you're gonna absolutely love this. They look great in their portfolio, but they would look absolutely fantastic, hung up on the wall alongside a collection of Doctor Who goodies. So thank you all for watching, guys. Links to the website are down in the description below where you can buy a copy for yourself. And once again, a massive thank you to Who Dares Publishing, and I hope to see you all very soon for another Doctor Who review.